And, and they were just so proud of, of us for what we were doing. But I think now that I'm older, I know it's even more than that because they knew that, that this organization was one that they knew they didn't have to worry about us, what we were doing, you know, who, where we were, who we were hanging with. Because, because again, you got this ragamuffin people going to Florida, Nashville, tra traveling everywhere, basically no chaperones, and we were fine. And I, I, I even, if, if my children had come to me and said, you know what, I'm going to join this group and, you know, we're going to go traveling all over the world or whatever, and, you know, well, who's going, who's chaperoned? Well, there aren't, there aren't any chaperones, you know. We, there are no chaperones, there are no adults going with you. No. I said, well, no, mm-mm. Because <laughs> you don't know. There's yeah. nobody responsible for you. But here we were. And, and, and I know it was the hand of God that, was, that, that preserved us, that kept us. Um, we could have, the, the things that could have happened to us, it, it just boggles my mind now. And, and, and I know, I know the Lord's hand was on us because, because we were so ignorant. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know <laughs> We didn't know what we were singing about, but the Lord honored that, and he's honored that as the years have gone on because I know that, that that's a lot of where, where my roots were, you know, and, and, learn, and being in churches and learning about them. I grew up in a church. I grew up in a church. My father had been a pastor. My parents were divorced, but my mom, we were always in church. But this group, this, this organization came in at a time that, that I needed something, and I think we all needed something. We all needed each other. And, and the Lord, through the years, has, has continued to do a work in us. And, 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 I, and I say this, I have made some of the most incredible friends that I could ever imagine. I, I just, I can't even, I would, and that I would never have thought, because for a long time, I didn't, I didn't really make friends. You know, I mean, I knew a lot of people, and I mean, a family and, and you know, friends, but, but like to this level where there was nothing attached to it, you know, you know, your mama didn't know my mama and all this, you know, and so, and so this is where I learned how to um, develop relationships and, and, and nurture relationships and keep them, and, and the years have borne that out. Um, you made an interesting point, I, I mean, that uh, nobody's ever really mentioned before I know a lot of people have talked about the fact that Dr. Martin um, was trying to get out ahead of the curve as far as trying to make Eastern a, a, a welcoming environment for black students mm -hmm. because a lot of you know other colleges were still struggling with the issue of integration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the black gospel ensemble there was, in one sense, you guys were ambassadors when you were oh, going yeah. around different places saying, look, you know, you can come to Eastern and do some things. We absolutely became that. We absolutely became that. And, and, and the university gave us credit for that because they knew, and, and we knew, because people would tell us, the reason I'm coming to Eastern is because I want to be a part of that ensemble. I, I've had people come and tell me, you're the reason that I came to Eastern. Because when I heard you sing, I thought I, they knew they wanted to do that. So, and so, and, and I don't know if Dr. Martin made that decision based on that because he couldn't have known you know, that this was going to be a byproduct of that. Um, but it, it absolutely was. I mean, there are people that came here for that very reason. And, and I, I, I know that it's, it's, it's what kept them, too, because, because, because the ensemble became, it became the, the I'll call it an organization, but, but it was much more than that. But, but it became the place, like you say, that was safe. It was just safe. And I never... I'm glad you used that word because I never thought of that in terms of the ensemble, but it was a very safe place to be. I mean, it was safe to be emotionally, spiritually, and you know, and, and, in all kind of ways. So, yeah, and Dr. Martin, like I said, he could have easily said, no, I'm, I'm just not going to do that, you know, because the one thing about Dr. Martin, if he made an edict, it was going to happen, or it wasn't going to happen. Well, people, people talk about Dr. Martin as a very imposing figure because he was, he was big. He was, a, he was a large man. He was but a very large man. He was always very free. If you had a legitimate concern and you brought it up to him. Dr. Martin, I can remember him. I can remember him calling a meeting of the African-American students here. We held it in the, the science room over there. I can't think of the name of that. And... 
and I could tell that, and at the time, and, and, and I, my recollection is, is that we were very rude to him, and I remember that, and I remember being called out on it by one of my classmates. But, but what I didn't understand now because of my youth and, and immaturity was that even though I didn't really care for what he was saying, he was really trying to make an effort to understand what it was that we wanted. And this didn't have anything to do with the ensemble. This had to do with, with things on the campus in general. But he came and he, and he talked to us. We, we answered questions. I don't really remember what came out of that in terms of, you know, when I left there thinking, oh, that was a good meeting or it wasn't a good meeting. But I do know that he made the effort to do that. And I know that, that they even eventually had a, a, a panel of, of some of the black students on campus to address certain issues. So, so for, for as imposing as he was and, and for a very much the leader that he was, and, 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 and I, I'd like to say that I think now we need more leaders like that because he was not anybody that you could intimidate. And he was very much concerned about this campus. Um, and he, he, took, he took responsibility for his decisions. So when he made the decision to let us do what he wanted us to do, he stood by that. He stood by that. And because of that, um, this, the whole, literally and figuratively, the whole complexion of Eastern changed. It really did. So, so I'd, I'd call him um, a man with a vision, too as well. Because uh, you were here during those Martin years. Where oh my they were goodness. doing all the building and things. One student, uh, I, can't, I forget who it was, uh, a black graduate, talked about uh, Dr. Martin, and may have been the same meeting that you guys mm -hmm. were in, or another one. They went in, okay, these are a list of concerns that we had with Dr. Martin. Absolutely. And he Absolutely. read it off, and one of the ones that came right up, he said, black cheerleaders, no black cheerleaders. Yeah, yeah and, I, that was the meeting. And while the <laughs> students were sitting there, Martin <laughs> called the coach and mm -hmm. said, how come there's no black cheerleaders? <laughs> and it's like, okay, oh, yeah. next and, by next Thursday, we're going to have black cheerleaders. And we did, and we did, John Ray. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, I could say he was, he was. Tell me about that, that, that whole situation. Like, the, the situation was, I'm almost embarrassed to share it because, because I don't think we were really fair to him mm -hmm. because because what the, the, the whole time was very tense, and, and it was a lot of um, lack of communication and you know just, just a lot of angry people and and, 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 and as we were, young people tend to be at that as age. young people tend to be at that age, yes, and so we just know that we just want to be heard, okay and he did he had a meeting and and, and there was a list and, and I remember I remember very well. You know him standing before us, and at the time, it, it wasn't until years later that I thought, you know, that really took a lot of guts for him to do that because he didn't have to meet with us. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, what I'm saying we were part of his of the campus here, but he really wasn't obligated to take time. He could have sent, you know, one of the deans, or you know, just said, you know what, you all just get over it, you know, deal with it, you know. But but he said he he came in with us. And, and I, I don't remember everything that happened there, but, but what stands out on my mind is that he called the meeting, he was interested in what we had to say, and, and I don't think we treated him with the respect that we should have. And, and, and that's what stands out in my mind about that. But in spite of that, he still let the ensemble do what he said. He, he, he was a man of his word. And so, you know, you can't, you know, you. I just have to give him his props for that. Yeah, that's and that's kind of the legacy of of, of Eastern. Um, I can remember going into um, and I can't, of course I can't remember names now, but some of the dean's offices and and sharing some concerns and 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 I always felt free to do that, even if even if they didn't agree with what I said. Um, but I always felt that that I was able to to talk to people. And, and to go in and voice some concerns. And, and like I say, and even if the outcome was not what I wanted, at least I had the ability to do that. Dr. Burge was one of those people who um, was, was very, very much dedicated uh, to, to the, uh, the African Americans on campus at that time. And, and I don't know, I don't know if he, if he one day just sat down and said, you know, I'm just gonna start, you know, uh, mentoring all the blacks. I don't know, but I just know that it's our relationship evolved so much so that I just went to see his wife uh, uh, last month, and she still has a picture of Eric, 
and 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 Ravella, his then wife, in her in her uh, bedroom, and she still thinks of them as her children. Um, so I, I don't know. I can't I can't explain what happened to Easton. I have people, friends from other schools in Kentucky, who would say, you know what? Well, you know, the black students at Western, you know, we had a bond. We, you know, wh why do y'all think you are so special? Really, we. I've been, we've been accused of being snobs when it comes to having this relationship. And I, you know what I tell them? I don't know either. <laughs> I just know, I just know that I, I have a bond with the people here that I've known people in my life for years that I don't have the kind of bond with, who are friends of mine, that I don't have the same kind of bond and the same kind of feelings that I do for the people of Eastern. And I can only think that that's because the Lord was in this group and he formed it. Because like I say, not one of us can actually go back and pinpoint when this started, exactly the date, exactly the time. Who I, I had one person tell me, I said, Deborah, how, how did, um, I said, how did, you, how did this get started? Because she was here in, in 67. She said, I remember somebody telling me to go to the music building and, you know, and start singing with this group. I said, well, who was it? She said, I have no idea. She said, I don't remember who told me. <laughs> I said, I said, you don't remember who told me? She said, no. She said, I, I have no clue who told me. And and we've gotten that. We have sat down and tried to figure out. How, even Eric, who really started it, doesn't know exactly how it started. So I said, you know what? This must be Noah and the flood. The animals, they just came. That's <laughs> all I know. Because all of a sudden, and so, 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 and I said it to say, nobody sat down and said, okay, we're going to start this university ensemble, and this is going to be our goal. This is going to be, you know, we're going to do the tours. We're gonna, not at all. It was, it, the, the one thing I do know, it just kind of started as something to do, to give people something to do. And from there, it just, it just took off to places that nobody, nobody imagined. And, and like I say, the relationships that are formed in there, if, if you go on the page that Philip has set up, uh, there's a survey uh, that former members can take. And the one theme that goes through all of it when it says, well, what do you remember most about an ensemble? And without a doubt, it's always the friendships, the lifelong friendships, and the relationships. That's just the whole thing. That and, and singing for the Lord. And I don't mean to minimize that, but, but, but it's, it's the relationships. And, and, I, and I know that when God establishes something, it's, it's everlasting because that's how he works. So I, I can only imagine that this is what this was. You know, it, it's interesting, um, and you touched on this a little bit, and, and, and everybody else has touched on it, um, because it's hard for me to imagine, and I'm, you know, I only started college a few years after you guys did, but um, the challenges of also trying to balance your academics with the ensemble, with yeah. being a small group, but that everybody said that, um, especially since you only had one black professor at that time, right. but you know, for the most part, it seems like to a man so far, at least today, everybody said that the faculty there was invested in you as a student. They didn't care what you looked like. They That's wanted you to succeed. That is very true. That is very true. The faculty, I remember, I don't remember his name, of course, but my geology teacher who let me come in his office, I, 